Welcome back, Unreal Tutorial Episode 2. Today we're going to look at uh, just kind of managing your project a little bit and adding your first core code to your game. So, a uh, little housekeeping. You should probably launch Visual Studio Installer uh, every time you're about to launch Visual Studio. It'll give you the option to uh, modify and update and all that good stuff, otherwise you're going to launch Studio load your whole project then it's going to tell you it needs to update it's just a good idea all right and you know this is also where you make sure you have all of the unreal stuff i don't know if i've covered that yet we're just going to go ahead and launch visual studio and get into our project now we have my project three that's the one we were working on i just clicked on it and it loaded up so we are looking good so over here, wherever you have your solution explorer, make sure you're under your project. You have your main project actually set as the startup project. If it gets unchecked, it can uh, confuse some people. I've had it happen many times. You probably want to go through this Unreal Engine config if you haven't. Some of them are going to fail and it's not that big of a deal. So these integration tools want installed but it doesn't seem to break anything as of right now. So we could fix that. There's also naming convention stuff, uh, shader support, but we're not gonna worry about that too much for now. We're just gonna close that, but that should pop up for you too. And uh, as long as your project builds, it's probably fine, but yeah. All right, so once your project is selected, you wanna make sure you're on development editor uh, over here. And there is a way to widen that, but it's somewhere deep in the configuration. I don't feel like messing with it right now. So we're just going to launch our project here, and we're going we're gonna to do a few things. All right, we are in our project. Now, to change your default level, which I have done with that uh, actual blank level since the last episode, you go to uh, Settings and Project Settings, and there's a place here for Default Map under Maps and Modes. So you can change those to whatever you want. There's a lot of things in here. I'll try to explain it if I change anything, but uh, it's just stuff for you to configure your project basically with this editor. And someone mentioned that, uh, yeah, the whole eight gigs of memory is also the editor. That is technically true. So we don't know what our actual game size is going to be until we fully build it without the editor basically. And we'll get to that later. All right, so we can click back between Unreal and in our whole development environment and they're both running so that is good on our blank level we're going to go ahead and add a few things just by clicking up here we're just going to go and add a i want to do a plane and a light basically so we're under shapes find plane and we're just going to make it a lot larger by scaling it our lighting is currently set to lit that's why it's all dark we can go to unlit and see it in a different way we're going to keep it lit for the moment because we're also going to go ahead and add a light and i think just a point light is good for now point light is the most basic light i would say it's just a light from a space and when you click on it of course you get some properties i think it's a bit bright so we're just going to turn it down a lot maybe well we'll see but that's fine for now. All right, let's move our light. And this just gives us something to see. So if we hit play, it's gonna give us like our default game with the default camera controller, which is just a flying camera, basically. Let's see if we can get it to function. Nope, there's absolutely nothing here. So we probably need a player start for it to know where to. So we're actually just doing a search here and we'll put it up above our plane it says bad size if it is clipping into something just to give you a little tip so that should be fine let's hit play and see if it does anything so here we are we got our flying camera and uh yeah that's what we see we could you know start playing around with this structure a little bit and add a little tiny sphere and then we could drag this uh point light under the sphere so that is uh, a child of it. So the sphere will then move around. 
But what we can do with that is basically, if we zero this to zero the point light here, we should have them um, set on each other. So, okay, now we can go ahead and raise this up. Yeah, I'll raise this way up. Here we go. Yes, we could set our plane to zero, zero as well. And then that would make this make a little more sense and our player start as well. So you kind of want to get used to manipulating these is the point. And some simple stuff like this will kind of get you started. Once you drag up and down, you can press the end key to go down to the lowest surface. I'm going to make this light a lot bigger. There we go. Oh, we don't want to move just the light. Okay, so now that it is a child under the sphere, we want to move the sphere around. So this is kind of how you, uh, you know, you can just control objects together in this very simple way. And that's just something to get used to in game development because it's a very common thing. Now, really what I want to show you here is I want to show you how to start actually putting in your own functions and doing things with your level. So naturally we need some ideas, but we're not going to worry about that too much right now. Let's get into the technical details of how to make just a uh, function library that you can call from anywhere to do things with your game. So we're going to go to uh, Tools, New C++ Class, and we should see on the list a Blueprint Function Library. If you don't see it, maybe try All Classes. You can even search under All Classes, and you should see it. So you just click on it, or if you click on it here, it's the same thing, under Common Classes, and you click Next. Now, as long as you do not click public or private, it doesn't do that nonsense and it just leaves it in a flat hierarchy, which is how we want this. So we're not going to click either of those and we're going to give it a name. Uh, we'll just call it uh, our function lib. Hit create class and now this is going to use the link to Visual Studio to uh, go ahead and add the code. This isn't the only way of doing it but this is the recommended way. So if you're going to add code, just use this tool. It makes it simple. Otherwise you start to get into uh, other complications and we might get into how to add it later. All right. So after that's all done, we get a live coding succeeded. We go back to visual studio, visual studio needs to reload. So just hit reload all. And I will say also as just a quick side note, if you're having trouble, building this project and just nothing seems to work initially, like you can't even get the editor to launch, try just going to your project, uh, wherever it may be. Let me just go here to uh, this, you know, the top level of it, find the U project, right click it, go to show more options and go to generate Visual Studio project files and then launch it from that solution file. So that's just a, a random troubleshooting tip that you might need if you're uh, having trouble with the initial build. Okay, so now we've added this code. We can go over to Visual Studio. It's already got them open, but if we want to find them, they're over in source under the project, just in a nice flat hierarchy. There they are, our function library. We've got to decide what we want to put in here, and we've got to also kind of learn the structure. You can see it... Uh, has included some basics, Kismet, Blueprint print Function Library, and this whole generated thing. And we have a U class, and the class has a name, and it has something it inherits from, which is this function library from Unreal. And we got that generated body. So next, we pretty much just want to go public, and we can start making functions. And these functions, you want, I don't know what this thing's doing popping up, and just put it over somewhere else. We basically want to make a static function. Uh, we'll just call this one like uh, interact or something. But your function, now you can see this is pretty standard C++ for something you kind of want to be global. It's uh, defined in a header and it's static. But to expose it to Unreal, we got to go U property and in here put blueprint callable. Okay, so we found the documentation from Unreal, and we can see that we were making a core 
ish uh, core problem of using u property instead of u function. So, uh, my bad. Yeah, we'll just maybe cut that, cut that up a little bit, and see if that helps. Should be a little happier after that. Uh, we probably have to close the editor, and let's just take a look at their. Okay, they don't define it here. I guess they're defining it uh, in their other file, which makes sense. And I think. Uh, Visual Studio will help a little bit with this. Like if you right click and go to option under quick actions and refactoring, otherwise you have to do it manually. But it's going to go ahead and figure that out for us, so that's nice. And we have a blank definition here of interact. Let's see if this runs correctly. Let's just hit the run button. Okay, seems to be fine. So what we can do now is we can actually start using that function pretty much anywhere. For example, um, so if you want to like control how your map does things, you can go to its blueprint. All right, we're just going to go look at that. We can go to, I guess we go to open level blueprint. So this comes with the level. Now keep in mind, if you put a bunch of stuff in here, it's going to make your level laggy. All right, we're going to drag this into our current editor so it combines. All right, so the main thing we want to do here is show that we're in a blueprint because you're going to use blueprints all the time. It's kind of their main thing. And we want to make sure we can find our interact. There it is from our function library, interact. So now in our blueprints, we can start calling functions to do things with our C++. This is one of the core ways to interact. Or, well, this is kind of a server side thing in the long run, we'll say. I don't know. Uh, don't take that with a grain of salt. But for the most part, if it's a single player game and you're putting all your handling logic of the game, like the core mechanics, into a function library, uh, it's going to kind of make it easy to translate to a server later, or at least get started. Because it essentially, it's going to work sort of as a server if you do it like this. Now, Unreal likes to split things up a lot, but you don't necessarily have to do that, so you can do what you want. I think Blueprint function libraries are super cool and a super neat way to make your game unique and kind of define its core functionality of how things work. So I think that's the main thing I really wanted to show is just that you can do that now. Let's take a little bit of a look here at a few things. Let's say we go back to our code and we want to make this actually take something and return something. So we'll make it return a true or false. So we have something there and we probably want some sort of overlap, like a bounding box or something like that, passed in. And uh, that's something we got to think about, I guess. But for now, let's just pass in an integer, because why not? So we'll just make a integer pointer called input. Or we could do reference. I don't know. Either's fine. And if we want to make sure it doesn't get changed, let's make it const. So now we got to go put this in the definition. We also have to return a boolean here in the definition. And now we can just, I don't know, we can say if uh, input is greater than zero, return true. And then otherwise return false. Put that at the end there simple enough. So that's enough to get started just for a little quick demo. Let's go ahead and close the editor here. So I'm going to do this before launching again. Do a little save all. Do an exit. And let's recompile this, relaunch it. Now it's going to ask us if we want to reopen. I'm going to say no for now. Just so we can uh, do this again. This is how you open the level group blueprint for your current map. It's kind of a tongue twister for me. Maybe it's because I'm tired. I don't know. Let's just make sure our interact is updated as we expect. And there we go. And now you can see it does take an input. And it does return a value. And we can use this as we want. Event tick. Yeah, that's a little dangerous. The next thing I'd say we want to do is start adding key binds and a character. But that's going to have to be next episode because this one has gone on long enough. I'll see you guys then. Enjoy playing around with Unreal and with function libraries. They are super cool and super handy. 
and I'm sure you'll find them useful. All right, until next time, Matt signing out.